Story 1 Sometimes the world is a weird place. Scary even. There are things out there. Things that want to hurt you. To take you down and leave you for the darkness. Sometimes it is the obvious. The normal dangers of life. Sickness. Injury. Anything you can't outrun without the help of others. Sometimes it is the darkness itself that comes for you. Sometimes, just sometimes, it is those who you least expect that you should watch out for the most. Those right next to you that know your weaknesses. Those most fragile and innocent. And then it will seem all too obvious in the end. I had just moved into the apartment complex. My first year of college was bound to start. The job that I'd had since high school let me save up enough to rent my own flat, to get away from home, to live alone. For the first time in my life, in blissful silence, without roommates, siblings, parents, or cousins, bothering me with every little thing they could think of saying, bugging me on what I wanted to do with my life, when I was going to get married, Settle down. Earn the big buck. Get out of the house. Still, they cried when I did. Cried when I packed my bags. Cried stay when I boarded the train. But none of them wanted to come with me. To see the new apartment. To get settled in. Because that would require work on their side. I carried my suitcase alone. One. One was enough. More I didn't have. I didn't need in a furnished home. Clothes, bedsheets, school books. I lived four stories up, in a building without an elevator. And if I was honest, with every step I took, with every burning breath and every single sting of my muscles, I hoped more that it would never have one. A young woman rushed down the stairs jumping every other step as I heaved myself and my belongings up. She looked up, gave me half a smile as she passed. Then she stopped, hesitated. I could hear the breath she took before she called out to me, if I needed any help. I smiled, rose my hand for a silent, thanks, and shook my head. Well, welcome to the house, she smiled brightly then turned down the next flight of stairs. Rushed down those just as fast as she had the first. And for the rest of the way up, a similar half-suppressed smile rested on my face as well. There were two doors, two either side of the stairwell. One, mine, empty, dark wood and worn, brass knob. The other across the hall, greyed, but with a woven wreath hanging from the door. I couldn't help but glance at the door of my neighbour, someone I hadn't met yet, at the ornament of dry dead twigs and thorns, the empty shoe rack out front, the blackened hard welcome mat that barely said welcome anymore. My smile faded at the cold that seemed to radiate from that apartment. A dark hole seemed to open in the middle of the wreath, a blackness eating into the wood of the door and spreading slowly, slowly to its edges. The twigs began to tremble before winding into themselves, twisting into new knots, new braids, new weaves. And just for a moment, my sight faded, unfocused. My eyelids became heavy, threatened to shut. A shiver ran down my back, a stinging unease that weakened my grip enough to send my suitcase crashing to the floor. The bang rang loudly enough through the entire stairwell. I'm fairly sure my heart set out for a moment, but at least it pulled me out of the icy trance I had been caught in. I blinked heavily, shook my head to rid myself from the weariness left over from the long drive. There was a bed inside, merely ten metres away from me and I had little more to do that day. I could rest once I was in, I told myself. 
but as I bent down to pick up my suitcase back off the ground, I felt my stomach twist. The eerie feeling that someone, something, was watching me. I looked around, but there was no one but me in sight. Still, it pushed me to quickly get my door open. I pushed the suitcase inside and then, another glance back into the stairwell, only to see my neighbor's door budge close slowly until it clicked back into its lock. I first saw her on my way to the store, felt her eyes on me as I walked down the sidewalk, felt her gaze in every step, in the breath that ghosted down my back, and the shiver that ran my chest cold. The hair stood up on what felt like my entire body. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, couldn't help the urge to look around. But I found nothing. No one in the street, no one by the apartment building, until I looked up. She was sitting by the window, her face at the glass, so high up I could barely see it. I rose a hand in an attempted greeting, smiled weakly, uncertainly, but her eyes met mine, a piercing glare that seemed to stare straight into my soul, and it turned to ice, a weight sank in my chest before my blood began pulsing hot inside my throat, and my arms lost all sensation. My hand shook as I lowered it. I turned away, but her eyes stayed those bloodshot, ancient eyes, taking me apart from the inside. I swallowed heavily and set back into motion, but the lump in my throat stayed. Stayed for the rest of the day, until I was on my way back home. She watched me again, was still there, as if she hadn't moved an inch. It seemed to be her gaze alone, her eyes that made me sick and tied up in my throat. Until I had passed her door again. Until I closed mine behind myself. And then it was still there when I went to bed that night. Still the next day, when her eyes laid on me when I went to work. It was dark around me when I opened my eyes. Pitch black, but not silent. I heard the shuffling whisper of clothes, the occasional step echoing back from the darkness. A wide room, a cave without walls, without an end. I could barely feel the ground beneath my feet. Fingers wrapped around my ankles, always dragging me down, but somehow my body resisted. I only saw them when my eyes began adjusting, slowly, the world appeared before my eyes, and I wished it hadn't. Empty faces, smooth skin stretched over what should be eyes, the mouth, the nose, hair falling into blurred features over bony shoulders. That was what I recognized them by. My mother, standing in front of me, a white, blank, and vaguely face-like shape fixing me with all the attention she could express. Her jaws moved, tore at the skin that covered her mouth as she tried to open it. An empty struggling hum ripped from her throat. My father, to her left, reached out to me, his face just as wiped of his features as hers. His hand was aged, withered and fallen in. His touch was ice cold, stung my cheek, forced me to retreat from him. Something grabbed my shirt, tugged until I stumbled back. My sisters, grabbing at my clothes, at my hair, and my face. The nails came for my eyes. I had to push them back. But the hands kept coming. From all sides they reached for my face, grasped my skin, as if they were trying to tear it away. My father's fingers pressed into my mouth, past my lips, my teeth, gripped at my jaw and pried it open. A foul taste came from his skin. 
rotting meat that seemed to melt into my mouth. I gagged at the taste and the pain that spread from my jaws. I reached to push back his hand and his wrist fell apart in my hand. Flesh from bone, skin withered away. I threw his severed hand to the side, pushed him back with wide eyes. I barely moved an inch before my sisters grabbed my torso, held me firmly in place, facing my mother. The skin over her mouth stretched, tore as the joints of her jaws cracked unhinged. Dull, like heavy fabric ripping apart, a hole began to form, blood, fibers of flesh that refused to be torn from their place, stretched between the ragged edges of the tear, a tongue moved in the bloody dark behind. Her hands reached for my cheeks, my sisters at the back of my neck kept me from being unable to dodge her. My heart was beating out of my chest. My pulse roared from the gurgling groan coming from my mother's throat. And then, it was silent. For just a moment. My eyes, she whispered. I looked down at her, my lungs trembling so much they would barely let me breathe. You have my eyes. The sentence I heard her say so often now turned into a roaring scream as something broke out of her throat. Black, slicked, and shimmering in her blood. Its mouth opened wide, its jaw unhinged like hers as sharp teeth followed the piercing hiss that closed around my sight. Needles piercing into my eye, a winding body wrapped around my chest, tightened as it ripped one eye after the other out of my skull. My ribcage cracked loudly under the force of the snake, broken till its bones pierced my lungs, drained all air from them to fill them back up with blood. I tried to breathe, but the fluid rose up my windpipe, gargled in my throat, and filled my mouth with the heavy taste of rot and copper. I drowned in my own blood, choked as my sisters laughed, as the snake wound around my chest, crushed every bone into each other, popped my heart like it was nothing, compressed my intestines until they burst. I took the stairs carefully these days, held onto the railing more than I would normally, more than I did when I first came here. Could never quite keep myself straight up. My legs were made of jelly. My feet couldn't find grip. The woman, the neighbor who lived above me, rushed down the stairs in her usual vigor, smiled at me. Wish I could barely get myself to return. Merely looking up at her made my head spin. I heard her steps getting slower for a moment, like when they did when she had greeted me. But now she just looked. Looked and gave me that worried gaze before she let herself continue. A knowing gaze. And I just kept walking up. The last flight of stairs was an abyss. Was a pit of endless void one that drained all warmth from my body, the last bit of strength that I still had. It was her, her damn door that let my damn heart set out. She was an old woman, a fallen in lady, who never left her home. But her eyes haunted my nightmares. Those bloodshot eyes seemed to be everywhere, staring at me from underneath the stairs from the corners of my room at night. I could feel them when I passed her door, the ice pouring down my back. The whispers set in the second I put a foot on the last step up. They always did. I closed my eyes, lowered my head, and wanted to move past. And then I heard my name, the quiet whisper of Sam, over and over again until it was screaming in my head, until the noise drowned out my own thoughts. And I couldn't stop myself. I knew better, but I couldn't stop myself. My feet carried me on their own to her door. 
empty light in the gap beneath the door almost covered by the dirty welcome mat in front. Sam. 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 Still right in my ear as I leant in for the spy. I didn't want to. I didn't want to see. Didn't want to know. But my eye was at the spy. Saw the empty apartment behind. The dark hallway. Walls covered in woven strands of wood. A floor covered in foliage. A carpet of dead leaves and earth. Something winding underneath. She stepped in suddenly. Covered my view. Eyes glowing against the dark. Open mouth, a void full of needly teeth. I awoke in a cold sweat. Gasped for air. My insides were burning. My chest stung with the pressure of a thousand hits, with burst vessels and slowly forming bruises. And the second I opened my eyes, I saw her above me. My mother's mutilated face, the ever-staring grimace of the woman next door, turned into that of a monster, swollen, rotting, pitch-black drool dripping from the teeth peeking out over her lower lip as bloodshot eyes stared right into mine. It sat on my chest, pinned me down, cut off my breath. She shone through, barely, but I recognised her. The old woman, the hag next door. In my mind I was throwing her off of me. In my mind I was calling the police, getting help, planning my move. And in reality, I couldn't move. I couldn't move. Paralyzed while my mind seemed wide awake, while I was forced to watch the nightmare sitting on my chest. I don't know, don't remember if I fell asleep again, or if it just disappeared. But the next morning, she was standing in her door when I left my apartment with my suitcases in my hand. She was standing there, watching me. And she smiled. Before I continue to the next story, I just want to say thank you for choosing to watch this video and I hope you're enjoying my narration. If you are, please go ahead and hit the like button and if you don't already, subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. Story 2 I am telling you this because I care. I am telling you this because I lived through it. Because it almost broke me. Almost killed me. And when I was there, no one could help me. So I am telling you this in all its depths and horrors, in the hopes that you may never have to see them. It first started in the new house, I think. By now it is all a little hazy. Seems so long ago. But I remember before I moved in, I was never quite as tired, never as exhausted. Never so sick. I brought the place far under market value. Now I know why. Back then, I was happy about it. Of course I was. I was fresh out of university, fresh into the first proper job search, and any and all money I could save seemed nothing less than a godsend. And the place was nice at first. An old secluded blockhouse at the edge of town right where I met the forest, always cast in the soft green glow of foliage-filtered sunlight. A property with a little garden out front. It was barren, dry, dead earth, but I thought it had potential. But it was the big old oak tree in the front of the house that kept pulling me back to this decision. It was rid of any bark, bare wood, the trunk twisted into the sky. The middle formed into a thick knot, right before the warped, intertwined and tangled branches broke off the main stem, stretched their twigs and fingers into all directions. It looked like it had been cursed, like the work of a witch. And still, at the tips of the winding, needy twigs, leaves sprouted out, green and lively, withstanding any sickness that had befallen the tree itself. 
it was a sign of life, of endurance, of willpower. It was a work of art, as if someone had sat with it every day of its growing, shaping it, tying its twigs into wild braids and twisting strands. I arrived at the house with next to nothing, a suitcase filled with clothes and a small box of books and kitchenware. It was fully furnished. Beautiful wooden dressers and cupboards, an old leather couch in perfect condition, and a bed that looked like it was a modernised Viking's dream. I fell in love with it when I first arrived. Maybe that was what made it so hard to leave. I could barely sleep the first few nights there. The very first, I still thought it was the normal discomfort of a new home, a general uneasiness that would leave once I lived in a little. By the third sleepless night, I began doubting that idea. Every time I closed my eyes, the sound of steps pulled me back. Sometimes, a short walk across the room. Other times, a single plonk of a foot meeting the ground. And others, those that got me to leave my bed to wander the house, were dragging slow, a scraping over hardened ground. I heard the rustle of leaves, told myself it was the wind or that it had to be an animal right outside the house. I came from the city, grew up there, was never used to nature and the possibility of animals living around. Footsteps though, I thought I should have been used to them. I had never lived alone always had flatmates around. And still, here the sound of steps robbed me of my sleep. I wandered the rooms all night, but the house stayed silent when I was up. Still, any walk past a window made my skin crawl, the cold darkness behind them too thick, far too impenetrable, too protective of anything that might lurk behind. I shuddered, closed the curtains in the back and retreated to the kitchen to the window that faced the town. The light that at least warned me of silhouettes moving past my house. And for a minute or two I felt fine. I felt safe. Until I saw the branches of the oak tree shake. Until the leaves began trembling without any sign of wind. What started out as a small shudder soon turned into the sway of branches, a slow aching pull of the wood as it groaned under every move, as the trunk twisted more into its heavy knot. Everything around was silent. Nothing else was moving. Nothing but the tree. And then I saw its eyes, staring at me from between the branches. It was watching, unblinking, its gaze locked with mine. My sister laughed at me for being scared at what must have been a squirrel, at the steps of what could only have been a deer. But she was never there. She never felt the shift in the air when the sun went down, the pressing air that only ever settled at night. And she never heard them, those that she deemed squirrels and deer. I must have fallen asleep, shortly before my alarm went off. I still remembered seeing the dark lighten. I still remembered feeling the tension fall away. The air gets softer. Five minutes, maybe ten. It could not have been more. But when I was thrown into a river of ice, when the flesh froze on my bones and the fish with razor-sharp teeth began biting off chunks, When the pain of tearing flesh shot through my body, the jerks of snapping tendons and the warmth of my blood leaving my body surrounded me for not more than a second, before it too found its end in the icy streams, the sleep I finally fell into began to feel much more like a trap. I started becoming more of a walking corpse a day than I really was awake, and if I slept, it was because I passed out. And when I did, My head was haunted. Dreams, nightmares, and waking melted into a single indistinguishable horror. 
darkness tightened his icy grasp on me, reached out its winding claws and pried open my jaws as a black mass crawled its way across its arms. The racing, tapping of millions of skittering feet on the herd, only limbs filled the dry air around me. Eyes lit up, many more than there were feet by far, tiny red dots in the darkness, coming closer and closer. The breath trembled in my throat, any sound swallowed by the void as I tried to scream. My muscles paralysed, held back by themselves as any attempt to move tore them apart, breaking my bones and the twist they caused. The wet cracking as they snapped and tore into my muscles sounded through my body like roaring thunder. And then they reached my face. Every fibre in my body shook as the first of their feet dragged across my skin, felt their way onto my lips. My eyes were wide, the skitter slow as they sought a path over my cheeks. A nearly leg pushed into my field of view, feet like pins digging into my skin. My eyelids were pried back as the arachnic leg buried its way underneath my eye. My tongue twitched involuntary as the first prickly steps crept over the sensitive inside of my cheeks, my palate. And once the path had been found, the slow tapping turned into a wave of hectic skittering. Millions and millions of spiders burrow their way into every opening they could find. Feet scraped down my throat, little hard-shelled bodies squeezed underneath my eyes, into my nostrils, my ears. I felt needles breaking through my eardrums, crawling through my sinuses, down into my throat. My sight went away. Any breath just seemed to draw more of them in. Soon, my lungs were filled. Every breath a rattling torture. Every breath a wave of spiders rather than the air I so desperately needed. The pressure on my chest kept growing. Something sat atop threatened to crush my ribs, denied me any escape from the crawling under my skin, the tearing through my lungs, the blood coming up my throat. The sour metallic taste laid heavy on my tongue, began rotting in my mouth with the touch of the spider's legs. They were in my blood. They moved underneath my skin, ate away at my nerves. Every fraction of every second stretched to an eternity that I was doused in fire, and the eternal skitter of their feet. My head became heavy with a lack of oxygen, and when it did, something weird happened. A face appeared, right over mine, a grimace of swollen features. Black, dead skin stretched over bloated flesh, rotten, sharp teeth dripping over me. I woke in a coughing fit ripping through my body gasping for air every chance that I got. My ribs stung with every cough, screamed with every breath. My lungs were filled with stones, with void, with spiders. Anything but the air I tried to force inside. Blood pulsated through my ears, through my temples. I got up quicker than I should have, was hit with a wave of dizziness and nausea. Throwing up, would not have been the worst thing on my mind. And still, the inside of my mouth was tingling, as if they were still crawling through my throat. What was real and what wasn't was fading into one. So sure they were still there, gnawing at my nerves, borrowing their way through my limbs, not knowing whether they had ever been there or if I was still dreaming. I fell into the kitchen, I cut open my arms, dug under my skin to fish them out. But all I got was blood as my fingers scraped across bared flesh, muscles and sinews. The warmth of my blood running encased my arm. The knife slipped from my hand as the slick liquid covered it. Thank you for watching and or listening to this video. Again, if you enjoyed it, please go ahead and hit the like button. And if you don't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and select the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. 
Also, please leave a comment on this video letting me know what you thought of it. Comments really help with the YouTube algorithm and will really help my channel to grow. If you have a story you would like me to narrate, please email it to me at stories at daredeverall.com. I'm getting close to my next milestone of 100,000 subscribers. Thank you to everyone who is continuing to subscribe to this channel and contributing to its growth by liking videos and leaving comments. Once I get to 100,000 subscribers, my plan is to reward you all with an epic video with over three hours of original content. If that is the sort of thing you want to hear, please keep helping this channel to grow. If you want to support my channel even further, there are a number of ways you can do so. You can consider leaving me a tip for this video via my PayPal. Link is included in the description. Check out my Teespring store and consider purchasing one of my shirt designs. Or head over to Audible where there is a book Punch by J.R. Park that I narrated. I get a small royalty if you decide to purchase that. Thanks again for watching.